years ago A blob climbed out of the sea He looked at the sky and yelled I'd like to fly And poof, he sprouted some wings He climbed up a tree to the very tip top He jumped off a limb and he hit with a plop He broke both his legs, so he started to hop. Ribbit, ribbit. Billions and billions of years ago. We know it's absurd and it doesn't make sense, but we can explain if you give us a chance. We know it's not science, but we're really sincere. And it sure seems to help to add billions of years. Billions and billions of years ago, a frog went out for a stroll. The froggy went purr, I could show you some fur. And poof, hair started to grow. It grew on his hands and his little webbed feet. It grew on his head and it really looked neat. He thought, I'm a monkey, I'll swing from a tree. <laughs> billions and billions of years ago. <laughs> Sing it, class. Know it's absurd and it doesn't make sense But we can explain if you give us a chance We know it's not science, but really sincere really sincere And it sure seems to help to add billions of years Now class, listen carefully Oh, this is the best part Oh, you're going to love this now, listen <laughs> Billions and billions of years ago A monkey sat on a rock He said with a wink I'm a genius, I think And poof, he started to talk Oh yes, he did The problems of math he could now understand he made a trombone and he started a band He changed from a monkey right into a man Billions and billions of years ago We know it's absurd doesn't make sense, but we can explain if you give us a chance. We know it's not science, but we're really sincere. And it sure seems to help to add billions of years. It sure seems to help to add billions of years. Billions and billions of years ago. Hang on a second. We'll get it going here. It'll it'll uh fix. There we go. All right. I think it should be fine now. We'll get it working here. Just give me a second. I'll make sure everybody's on and Everything is going good. Let's see. All right, give me a second here. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. 
make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, make a joyful noise. Enter into his courts with praise, make a joyful noise. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Make a joyful noise, serve the Lord with gladness. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His everlasting, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth. His truth endureth. His truth endureth through all generations. Make a joyful, in his truth endureth to all generations. Make a joyful noise, make a joyful noise, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. All right, let's see. Where are we going to go now? We'll give people a few minutes to get on here. Let's see what we'll do here. Hopefully you can hear me okay. It's a good time to check the microphone. Make sure you can hear me okay. With that, definitely a bunch of weirdos. All right, let's see. Oh, let's see. Let me get down to my files here, the secret files. Here we go. How about this one. There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life's sea. I'm tossed, it sends out a light that I might see, and the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead us home. If it wasn't for that old lighthouse, my ship would be. They say tear that old lighthouse down. You see the big ships, they don't sail this way anymore. So what's the use of it standing around? But then my mind goes back to that storm. Jesus is 
And from the rocks of city I shone a light around me Oh, that I might clearly see If it wasn't for that old lighthouse Then where would this ship be? If it wasn't for that old lighthouse, where would this ship be? All right, one more. Rideth a king in his might, leading the host of all the faithful into the midst of the fight. See them with courage advancing, clad in their brilliant array, shouting the name of their leader. Hear them exultingly say, Not to the strong is the battle, not to the swift is the true and the faithful victory is promised through the race conquering now and still to conquer who is this wonderful king whence are the armies which he leadeth while of his glory they sing he is our lord and redeemer savior and monarch divine they are the stars that in his kingdom will shine. Conquering now and still to conquer, Jesus, thou ruler of all. Thrones and their scepters all shall perish, crowns and their splendor shall fall, yet shall the the strong is the battle, not to the swift is the race, he yet to the true and the faithful, victory is promised through the race, not to the strong is the battle, not to the swift is the race, he yet to the true Amen. OPBC Online, a ministry of Old Paz Baptist Church in Northfield, Minnesota. Well, that's where the meeting house is anyway. But I'm in the concrete compound here today, ready to bring you a, another broadcast here. Um, and we're going to talk about a lot of great things here today. Uh, well, a lot of sad things, really, when it comes to the charismatic movement. But it's great that we know the truth of them and we're not confused by them. We're not living in confusion. Right. We're not living in confusion, but we're living in the land of understanding and truth. Right. And praise God for that. Uh, and uh, let's see. Charismatic doctrine is easy to refute. It, of course it is. But there are absolutely millions of people that are involved with it, Tim. It doesn't matter how easy it is. What you find out with heresy is, is that you have to continue to bang the drum and warn people about it. You have to continue to bang the drum and let them know because there are people that are stuck in this. And just one of these broadcasts might stick with somebody. It might catch their eye. They might look to it and and study the scriptures out for themselves and God may use it in their life to help them to recover them from their snare. Because there's a lot of people in that snare. A lot of people get deceived by the charismatic movement. A lot of them. Very common. 
Actually, it's one of the most fastest growing religions and denominations uh, out there today in foreign lands. Uh, especially also outside of America and foreign lands, they've invaded places like Africa with their prosperity gospel. Completely deceiving the masses with it and destroying people's lives. So it's, it's, um, it's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous doctrine. And by the way, it's a very sneaky one too at times. Because a lot of times, a lot of times what happens is these charismatics, they slip into churches. They'll end up slipping into churches and they'll end up deceiving people along the way. They slip right into churches and act like they believe the way you do. But really secretly what they do is they teach charismatic doctrines exorcisms according to the charismatic movement, which is the same movement as Rome. It is the exact same movement as Rome. That's, that's what it is. And it's what they teach. But they do it in a very slippery way. I've watched it. It's dangerous. It's a dangerous movement. It distracts people from true spiritual warfare. Truly fighting the devil and his kingdom into becoming a sideshow circuit, a circus, uh, excuse me, a circus sideshow, that is. That's what happens. It's very dangerous. It cannot be talked about enough. Its leaders cannot be exposed enough. They, they all come, they eventually, they all come from Rome, from the mystics of Rome. I've taught on the history of that. I've showed you that in times past. And it's been a while since I've actually talked about it. It's been a while. And it's good to bang that old drum once in a while again just to wake people up to it. To the cult of the charismatic movement. It is an absolutely diabolical, satanic cult. Its leaders are in bed with Rome, literally, like literally. From Kenneth Copeland to Paula White. T.D. Jakes. Prosperity Pimps. Creflo Gimme Yodala. And it's true, Catholics are charismatics. Psychic readings and tarot cards continue to grow in popularity. Let's see, we're gonna look at this one. This is part of our... The Christ alignment. Hmm, that's interesting. We'll have to look at that here. We'll have to look at that. What do you say, childrens? What do you say we look at that right away here? This just came over the wire here. I'll take a look at it. Oh, you better believe it. If you go back and listen to my history on, chari on the charismatic movement, uh, David Cloud documents it. Many men have documented the history goes right to Rome. It's the first mystics. They were the ones that did it. And I'll be honest with you. I have an absolute hate for the charismatic doctrines that they hold to and they teach. I have a hate for them. Not the people. But I hate for their witchy poo nonsense. I hate it. I absolutely loathe and hate it. 
And by God's grace, till my dying day, I will thunder out against it, having been burned by those people. And the fake Judas's witches alike. So then you have this charismatic movement, this woke, this woke charismatic devilish doctrine. That's the question, and that will be 1999, Carl. Placed in a safety deposit box in an offshore account. <laughs> uh, Pastor, on another note, do you think Melchizedek in Scripture is a theophany of Jesus Christ? Yes. Melchizedek was and is Jesus Christ. I believe. Absolutely. 100%. I believe Paul is tying all that in together in the book of Hebrews. I believe he's tying it all together there. And he explains it in the book of Hebrews. Without father and without mother. One deals with, with uh, his incarnation to be without an earthly father. One deals with him coming from uh, him having an earthly mother. It's describing him. The mystery of the hypostatic union. Great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifest in the flesh. Okay. But I believe that's what that's doing is describing. Describing Christ. All right. Well. We're going to look at this one together here. Christian psychic readings and tarot cards. You know, we've talked about this before. Uh, these people that are doing this, these mystic charismatic witches. Bunch of witches. Redefining who God is. Redefining who Bible, what Bible faith is. Bunch of witches. Christ's alignment is a false Christian group based out of Melbourne, Australia, that has aligned itself with the cult of Bethel Church. Now, we're going to talk more about Bethel Church today, Bethel Redding. What a bunch of devils. We've talked about them so much, but it's needful that we discuss these people because these people are destroying Christians, or, or they're destroying people before they even become Christians. A few years ago... Uh, he says, a well-known Christian version of tarot cards. Christ alignment is a well-known for its Christian version of tarot cards, readings, and other occult practices. A few years ago, Christ alignment made headlines. Uh, hang on a second. Pinky Sue said, an Orthodox Jew told me once that Melchizedek was Shem. He was still alive. Well, that's wonderful, but here's the problem with that synopsis. Shem had a daddy and Shem had a mommy. And Shem's lineage is very clear. So not possible that that was Shem. 
And he had a beginning of days. And he had an ending of days. Okay. A few years ago, Christ's alignment made headlines when it held a nude festival and posted a topless spirit dance and wrote it off as part of its evangelism strategy. Well, I bet it is. I bet you could get a lot of people to listen to a, a an evangelistic scheme if you have strippers. You're going to attract a lot of people with that. Sure you are. Naked women running around? Of course. But understand that. Now remember this. Where in the scriptures do we see perversion tied to religion? And I'm talking about fornication. All over the Bible, the temple of Diana, what happened? Diana and the spirit and the are in the prostitutes. The the uh, the male prostitutes or the female prostitutes. Baal worship, all of these other groups that the Lord forbid the Israelites to be a part of, all had worship. And then what did we find out about Hitler? And what did we find about those other people, Hitler and all those other ones? What do we find out about them? Well, they, they all mix their, their religious ceremonies with fornication. Aleister Crowley said he would get power from uh, the seduction of a, of a young male boy, virgin boy. Well, wait, wait, but, but pastor, it, isn't that, isn't that what Rome does? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Wait, isn't that what the white power structure does around the whole world? Yeah. Yeah. It is it but pastor wait, it isn't that what um what the uh the Roman Empire did? Yeah. Isn't that what the Greek Empire did? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes. And yes. Why? Because the only real faith that excludes that is the word of God. It is biblical Christianity. One man, one woman, till death do you part, holy, chaste, without fornication, clean living, righteous living, separation from wickedness, cover your body, put some clothes on, lady, put some clothes on, man, cover your body, wear modest apparel, shame face with sobriety. Yep. See, Christianity is the only one that doesn't just say, hey, women, you got to be modest and you got to be and you got to you got to stay true to your husband. But that man could go out and be a male slut anytime he wants to. And like a dog in heat, he can run around. No. He's to abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. He's to abstain from fornication. He's to keep himself pure and walk in holiness and righteousness and sanctification. That is biblical Christianity. And, you know, I don't have a ton of time to, con well, I do. I have all the time I really need, don't I? But <laughs> You know, if you're a Christian woman, If you're a Christian woman, I'm going to address this to you first. 
no man alive besides your husband should ever see your body parts. No man should ever see your cleavage. No man should ever see your chest. No man should ever see that of your body. It should be covered. And it should not be covered with rubber band spandex type clothing so absolutely tight that I can see anything anyway. That I can see it all anyway. Even if you, even if you did have it covered, you can see it anyway. Because it is so, it is pressed so spandex tight on you. Or it's been stretched so tight on you that everything can be seen lady if you're a christian woman cover your body for your husband and by the way the other thing which we're going to talk about the other thing is that that you also the same turn shouldn't be running around with leggings on as your outerwear, as your normal clothing. Why would you? Why would you show a man every curve of your body? Have you no decency? Have you no sanctification? Have you no desire to honor God? Do you really desire to tempt those that are around you to look upon you and to lust after you? And I know what some of you absolutely carnal women are going to say right now. You carnal women, the first thing that comes to your mind, the first thing that comes to your mind is going to be, well, that's their problem. They shouldn't be perverts and look. Really? Well, you shouldn't dangle your body in front of them to look at. Right? Maybe you shouldn't do that. Not maybe. You shouldn't do that. Maybe you ought to love God enough to keep your body covered so you don't advertise if it ain't for sale. Right? Maybe your pastor, maybe you're listening to this and your pastor won't tell you that. Well, shame on that coward for not telling you that. But second of all, let me say this, and shame on your husband for not telling you to cover your body and not caring enough that everybody looks at every single curve and body part of your body. Oh, you just got issues. No, I just, I'm just, I'm just preaching to you what the Bible says. In shame face with sobriety. In modest apparel, shame faced with sobriety. Covering your body. You know what? I'm jealous over my wife. I'll be honest with you. I don't want you to know what she has. I don't want you to see every curve of her body. I don't want it's mine. It's not yours. I don't want you to see anything of her body like that. Now, what you have to ask yourself is, how come I don't care if men gawk at my body? By the way, you want, you want me to show you something why, why some women will never come to Old Paz Baptist Church and get very angry with me? Now, by the way, I don't have a dress code at Old Paz Baptist Church, uh, except keep your body covered and don't come naked. Um, if you do, then you're leaving. Um, you're not staying there because men aren't going to look at you like that. Now, if I met you on the street, if this is evangelism, nope, that's a different story. Right? But if it's something else, I have young men in the assembly. Oops. Let's see. Hey, look at this one. Should Christians dance? No, unless you're privately with your wife somewhere. 
Nobody can see you. Here we go. This one guaranteed to make friends and influence people all across the land. Should biblical modesty, should Christian women wear pants? Pretty amazing how a lot of women listen, a lot of people listen to that sermon, though. And there's a bunch online that, uh, this has made a lot of people mad, but you listen to this biblical modesty series and it'll help you. And by the way, here's a clue. You ready? Here's a clue. If your position sides with the world, and the world hates what I'm saying about this, it might clue you in to what side you're on. Right? Anyway. Where was that? Here it is right here. Let's move on. It is utterly abhorrent that the people at Bethel Church and other charismatic communities have taken something as completely and unmistakably occultic as tarot card readings and sought to disguise them as a Christ enlightenment. There is no way to make something so heavily steeped in the dark arts seem like a sensible approach to empowering destiny and making better decisions in the future. Furthermore, their nude festivals are nothing more than a depraved form of hedonism masquerading as an expression of community and oneness. It is a disgrace that such activities are still prevalent in the 21st century. Tarot cards, nude festivals, and all other ridiculous activities have absolutely nothing to do with Christianity. This Christian tarot ph phenomenon has its tentacles everywhere, and these festivals are showing up all over the world, including in the U.S. It's a good question, Brother Andrew. He said, do you have enough faith in Christ, and is he worth you being modest and saving yourself for your spouse? Amen, brother. I wish I would have done that. I wish that I was saved and that I would have done that. And I agree completely. That's the goal. That's the goal. Amen. That's the goal. Man, it's cold in here. I'm going to turn the heat up. Hang on. There we go. All right. Okay. So that is that is the first one that we looked at here. Cousins to Bethel Church there in Reading. And uh, so you understand that's exactly where these people are. That's what they do. It's witchcraft. All witchcraft must be rejected. Okay, not that one. I want to look at this one. Speaking of leggings and everything, and let's go to this version. There we go. Bethel Leader, listen to this. Selling prophetic leggings to enhance your awareness of God's presence. I'm not kidding you. People will fall for the dumbest stuff in all the world. They will literally fall for the dumbest stuff in all the world. It's just amazing. Ah, uh, let's see here. Hang on. All right. Has 
Strix. Teresa Deadman teaches and leads the Kingdom Creative Movement at Bethel Church School of Supernatural Ministry. Translation, Bethel School of Magic. They are witches. And once they get there, man, that tricks them girls out. They get a little weird. I met this girl one time. Before she left, she was a sweet kid. You know, she wasn't uh, a separated Baptist or a separated Christian or anything like that. She, But, you know, she was a Christian girl, I think. She was, I, I think, I don't know. Anyway, she, traditional family type setup. She went off to Bethel for one year, man. She came back with a nose ring, and she came back with the strangest, seductive spirit from being out there at that school for just a year. And I was like, man, what happened to you? It is the straight. Them charismatics are the strangest thing. It's like that Catherine Crick. That Apostle Catherine Crick, seriously, seriously think that lady's a lesbian. Seriously think she is. We'll see what happens as time goes on, but I think she's a lesbian. Anyway, we'll see. It looks like uh, she promoted holy snoring before. Bethel Church Pastrix. Because there's no such thing as a female pastor who is likely to be a regular feature here due to some never-before-seen idiosyncratic charismatic manifestations. Hosted a guest on her ministry page who describes how God healed her after hearing a word from the Lord through her friends snoring. Teresa Deadman, who birthed and now heads up the Teaches the Kingdom Creative Movement at Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, had a guest on to describe the creative way the Lord heals. Encourage and uttering, whoa. They don't do that all the, whoa. Whoa. Like there's, there's some kind of enlightenment happening there. Yeah, there is. Bunch of satanic nutty enlightenment. The guest, Bella, describes how she was sick for years with a fever and throat pain that would flare up every few weeks. Then one night, my roommate on a missions trip, she was snoring. And one time she was snoring, I was waking up and the presence of God came in very strong. And every snore became like a word and it was like chosen, love, unique. But then this one sentence came. Believe you are healed. In the snore like this? Really? And, and she snored, believe you're healed? Whoa. 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 I mean, if you ask me, these people are like tripping. Because you could, honestly, you couldn't convince me of this when I was on drugs. When I was a lost man on drugs, you would never convince me of this stuff. I mean, I hung around people that. That saw. You know, that thought they were oranges and stuff when they were on drugs. Right? I don't see anybody named Steve on this, unless I'm missing him. Where do you see Steve at? I don't see any Steve on this. I'm looking here. Hold on, Carl. I don't see anybody named Steve on there. Anyway.
Bella explains that later when her friend woke up, she apologized for snoring, that she knew that she was snoring in her dream and tried to wake herself up, but a voice appeared to her in the dream and told her not to wake up. Instead told her it's the Lion of Judah snoring through your... It coming through your snoring. Whoa. Yeah, I don't see anybody. Oh, Steve. Steve, we don't fight against flesh and blood. The 612, you shouldn't call nobody dumb. Okay. Yep. Steve's the nutty charismatic. Hey, Steve. I don't see it on my thread here, but that's okay. I don't really care. I'm not worried about Steve. Steve sounds like a nutty charismatic, so no problem. No problem, Steve. Maybe you'll hear something in snoring too, bro. Maybe you'll just hear... Hey, Steve, maybe you can decipher this. Maybe I can do jingle bells with snoring and you can be edified by it or something weird like that, but I'm just going to move on, okay? So that's the Bethel lady, right? And and that was her back then. So now, now we have Mrs. Leggins. That's not her real name, but she's some kind of preacher lady, uh, falsely so-called a Jezebel. And the, the preacher lady is up there, and what is she doing? She's telling people that she's got holy leggings, holy leggings, and these leggings are going to bring you closer to God. And I'm telling you something right now, man. They will bring you closer to God. You must have the holy leggings. Like she's some kind of Hindu guru or something, and they're going to they're going to believe her. It turns out she has a new side hustle, a store. Where apart from selling art prints that were created from heaven's perspective, it is intended to transport you and others into an encounter of God's supernatural presence and power. Okay. Yo. She also sells those prints on various clothing and articles where she claims by fashion designs embody the prophetic art they are created for. Wearing my art enhances your awareness of God's presence and helps you become a walking encounter of heaven's message to those around you. Then there is this happy Jesus cell phone case whose prophetic meaning is you have captivated Jesus every time you stare into his face. He is so happy to see you, touch you, and know you. No matter where you go or what you do, he smiles and welcomes you home. A heavenly spirals origami tote where windows, ladders, and doors open up new perspectives as heaven's access points open new realms for you. Okay, and a live kimono whose prophetic meaning is that glory awakens seeds inside releasing growth that jumps up in spirits and sings we are alive for the glory of God. End quote. Well, now, so besides, uh, no, that's not a joke. That's dead serious. And if you call now, we'll throw in the Jesus uh, kimono. Kimono. As glory awakens seeds inside, releasing growth that jumps up in our spirit and sings out we are alive. No, I'm really not kidding. 
You're really not kidding. You, here you go. You want to order some? Here you go. Here's our clothing. Here's our prophetic art. Okay. Now, I want to teach you something about this. I want you to understand something. Now, Brother Aaron told me about this a long time ago. And by the way, congratulations to Brother Aaron and Rachel, who had their baby boy. Praise the Lord. Healthy baby boy. I think that's how you say his name. I'll probably end up calling him Ben Benny. So, this is it right here. Would you like some lifestyle accessories? Some prophetic lifestyle accessories? Look at that. How about an origami tote? How about mysteries in motion? Huh? The torch of revival. There you go. The keys to revival Samsung case. <laughs> Oh, here's the, <laughs> hey, here's the happy Jesus Samsung case. Here's the happy Jesus iPhone case. So who's ever dumb enough to buy this? <laughs> who's ever dumb enough to buy this case? <laughs> <laughs> this is the happy Jesus iPhone case. If you act now, <laughs> do you want to own happy Jesus? He looks right at you and smiles the whole time. And, and she literally says, and he wants to look at you. And he wants you to look at him. And he wants you to touch him. Okay. People get mad at me when I make fun. Aren't you? Somebody got on my, on my thread the other day and they said, on one of my videos, don't you ever get convicted about sarcasm? Well, not really. Not very often. Because I know that Jesus used sarcasm. I know that the Apostle Paul used sarcasm. And I know making fun of these witches is not a bad thing. Or they're false, heretic, Damnable doctrines of devils. And I hate to break it to you, but Jesus ain't no white guy from America. <laughs> That's not Jesus. <laughs> the happy Jesus iPhone case. You have captivated Jesus. Every time you stay. Stop. <laughs> How could this? You have captivated Jesus every time you stare into his face. He is so happy to see you. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, all right, I needed to laugh this. <laughs> I needed to laugh today anyways. <laughs> Oh, and they, these, <laughs> he is so happy to see you, touch you, and know you. No matter where you go or what you do, he smiles and welcomes you home. <laughs> I just turn around my phone and I just look, look, he's happy to see you. Oh, look, he's happy to see me today. It's so stupid. Like, <laughs> Anybody can fall for this. It's just ridiculous. But they are a bunch of witches. That's what they are. <laughs> who's that guy on the back of your phone? Hey, who's that guy on the back of your phone case? 
Oh, this? This is Caesar Borgio. That's, that's who that is. You recognize him? That, that's who that is. That's, that's who that is. That's the Pope's son. But that's who that is. That's, the, that's one of the ascended masters. That's who that is. Right, so I'm saying heavenly mysteries. Dancing waters tote bag. I don't know what that is. I don't even want to know what that is. Lights of the city mug. Okay. Each coffee mug, phone case, pillow, or tote bag carries the inspiring message of the prophetic art from which they were created. Translation, this is witchcraft. These are their spells. Get it? This is their witchcraft. That's what it is. what they do whoops that's the holy snore hang on well, there you go there's the gross leggings from some lady that needs to put some clothes on this is Bethel Church in Reading by the way they're building a 98 million dollar facility the Apostolic Training Center, $98 million facility. You get that? Yep. There's a lot of money in false religion. There's a lot of money in satanic Charismania. Let me tell you. This is why I would not be a Pentecostal. Or I would not be a charismatic. Their history starts with a rebellious female. Not to mention Rome. That's where the Pentecostals came. But the Pentecostals broke off. Many of them broke off the Baptist churches. See, Satan had to have his false doctrines. He had to have his church of the false doctrines. That's why when those Pentecostals, when they see me out preaching, and I run into those Pentecostals out there, and they see me out there, and they're, they, they tell me they're Pentecostals and everything else, and there's like, when are you going to get filled with the Spirit? I was like, I've had the Spirit since I was saved by the grace of Almighty God. There are many fillings of the Spirit in your life. Be not drunk with wine wearing his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And it's not running, and it's not running around speaking in tongues that are not actual languages. And since I'm not, since, since, I'm not the Apostle Paul or any of the other apostles, and I'm not speaking in tongues to be assigned to the Jews. I don't have to worry about that. That's not my duty. Right? But that's what they do. Someone said, What do you think about casting out devils or demons? Well, demons is a demons is a term that is not biblical. Devils is a biblical term. Um, I've used the word demons before too, but it's it, devils is a biblical term. What do I think about it? I think they come out with prayer, and I think I think they leave, and I don't think it's it's some. I don't think it's some uh, grueling exorcist, uh, poltergeist, bad Hollywood video where you lock somebody in a room and find out 
how many Pop-Tarts they stole when they were three years old or how many cookies they stole and reenact every sin they ever had in their life and back them all the way up there and try to cast out every devil and every bad thing they ever did in their life and go back to that. I don't believe that nonsense. I don't believe it for one minute. I believe for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I believe that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I believe that it is the power of God unto salvation. I believe that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe when the Son of Man shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. That's what I believe. I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe in the power of the Son of God to save men's lives and to change them. I believe if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You can take your spooky Hollywood charismatic garbage from the pit of hell, your stupid Merlin sorcerer, Simon the sorcerer garbage from the pit of hell, and you can throw it there and you can leave it there. Because I don't believe it for one second. I believe in the Bible and the grace of Almighty God. That's what I believe. And if you're selling something else, I ain't smoking it, man. I'm not smoking it. You hear me? I know what Jesus Christ has the power to do. I know it. I've lived it. I've had the power of God. I've seen God change men's lives. So you want to bring your spooky satanic garbage to me? I'm going to take the word of God. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to show you what Jesus does when he redeems people, saves them, and changes changes them. I don't care what Bill Schneblin says. I don't care what some chick comic book tells you. I care what my Bible says. That's what I care about. And seen it very plainly and hear it. I don't believe any bit of that nonsense that is taught. They're all a bunch of jokesters, and all they really do is enslave people and put them back under those satanic curses. You want to know what deliverance is? It's called salvation. That's what deliverance is. It's being saved. That's the same word. Delivered. You'll never convince me otherwise of anything else. Why? Because I've seen that joke. I've seen those phonies. I, I've seen those false prophets. I've seen those evil men crept in unawares. I've been bruised and stabbed and battered by those men. I know exactly who they are and I know exactly what they do. And by the way, I don't know who those guys are and I don't care who those guys are. I have a Bible. And if those guys are teaching anything contrary to that, I don't care. Plain and simple. I've watched it. I've seen those people. And I'll tell you what, you get that charismatic nut job stuff in you, you ain't getting it out of them. They'll try to come to your church and infect your church with that garbage. That's exactly what they do. I don't care about their spooky little sideshow nonsense. You want to know something? You know what I didn't see? You want to know you know want to know what I didn't see? I never saw DL Moody casting out devils. I never saw Charles Spurgeon casting out devils. You know what I saw him preaching out devils. That's what I saw him doing. What about Mark 16? I ain't got no problem with it. You challenging me? Let's do it. That's what I say. Let's do it, charismatic boy. Let's do it. Let's do it, little demon slayer. Let's do it. I hate this stuff. I'm telling you, I hate it. I hate it because it's false. I hate it because it's a lie. I hate it because you people do your little spook show, Catherine Kuhlman nonsense. I hate it. And, oh, you're getting passionate. You're yelling. Yeah, I am. I am. You got a problem with it? Turn the channel then. I don't care. I will forever war against your satanic antichrist garbage. 
You think I'm afraid of the word of God? I live by it. It's connected to my soul. It's what I feast on. Not a problem. Not a problem. Whatsoever. Oh, why are you getting so excited? Because I hate your doctrine. I hate it with a passion. I loathe it. I hate it. I war against it. I hate it. It's phony. You're a fake. You don't know the power of God because you're too busy floating around like a bat somewhere in the air. You don't know the word of God. You pick out verses and try to pull things out and try to make your doctrines about it and build up a whole spooky doctrine on trash cans and puking in trash cans and everything else. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. No, I'm not warring against the scriptures. I'm warring against your interpretation of it, you little devil. That's what I'm doing. That's exactly what I'm warring against. Not God's word. I love it. I live for it my whole life. My never dying soul is staked on that book and its perfection. He said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents, and they shall drink any deadly thing. Right. Uh, uh, okay. I will enlighten you on it. Who is he speaking to? Who is he speaking to? His apostles. And what were they doing? Showing signs and wonders. And where were those, shine, where were those signs showed? To Israel. That's where, they were, that's where they were showed. I'm just curious. Do you drink poison on a regular basis? Do you drink, I'll wait for you to answer the question. Do you drink poison on a regular basis? Do you grab strychnine and poison? Do you grab it and drink it on a regular basis? Do you do that as a sign? No, 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 little fake. No, answer the question. Do you grab straight up poison that kills men and drink it on a daily basis to prove your signs and wonders. Do you do that? I'll wait for you to answer the question. I'll wait. No, 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 no. You're, you're doing your signs and wonders. Do you do signs and wonders by taking up serpents and poison? Do you do that? I'm going to wait for you to answer that question in an honest way. I'm not going to let you slither like the little snake you are out of it. You're going to answer the question. You came on my page to challenge me. So now that you came here, I'm going to challenge you. So let's have it. I'm waiting. I'll definitely wait. Do you do that for signs and wonders? Do you take up serpents and do you drink poison? Do you do that? Is that one of the signs? Do you believe that God has equipped you to do that? I'm just, I'm just curious if you do that. How about that was given to the apostles as they were laying the foundation of the church? And then those signs and wonders went away. Then those signs and wonders went away. No, 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 little devil. No, 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 little devil. You don't ask me a question, little devil. You answer the question that I gave you or you get off my page. If you don't answer the question that I gave you, you leave. That's the way it works. This is my channel. 
you can go do things on your channel and make your I hate Cooley video over there. And I'll go to sleep tonight just fine laughing about it. But if you're going to come on here, then you go ahead and do it. No, he's not trying to answer the question because he can't. Because he can't be honest. He can't be honest. So he'll go bye-bye. That's okay. See, these charismatic videos, somebody asks, well, why are you doing these videos? Oh, I think you all know why I do them. Exhibit A? He's the reason why. Those people are. Because they all come out of the work. Okay. They shall take up serpents. Have you taken up serpents, little devil? Have you taken up serpents? They shall take up serpents. Okay, let's go with your let's go with your definition. Are you taking up serpents? Okay, let's skip over the let's skip, skip over the drinking of poison. Have you taken up serpents? It says they shall take up serpents. Answer the question, little devil. Answer it, charismatic devil. Answer it. Now you're cornered, devil. Answer it. And you're right. I'm not like your pastor. You're right. I'm not like you that are listening out there. I'm not like him. And I don't want to be like him. I'm doing what God's called me to do. I'm a lost Pharisee? Okay, so you can't answer the question. Would all 50 people on here notice that he could not answer the question? I even let him back out of it, out of the taking up, out of the uh, if they drink any deadly thing, and I backed up to they shall take up serpents. And he hasn't answered that either. Why? Because he can't. So let the record show that the charismatic devil that attacked me with Mark 16 and then tried to twist it and act like I'm warring against Mark 16 uh, is the one actually warring against Mark 16. Do you understand how sorcerers work? Do you understand how little devils work? They shall take up serpents. Well, have you now? Have you? Do you take up serpents regularly to prove it? That's right, Ken and Sturman. Thank you for posting that. Snake handling Pentecostal pastor dies from snake bite. Says here, they shall take up serpents. Okay, so he's gone. He's not willing to answer the question because he can't. He's just a little another charismatic fake. Thank you. Okay. Now, we're done with him. We're done with him very plainly, and we'll keep moving on. And some of you might get offended by what I do. I don't really care. I'll be honest with you. I don't. If you get upset with me because I'm standing against that witchcraft, it's just because you ain't been burnt by it, friend. <laughs> you ain't been burnt by these devils. And I mean that I don't mean him. I mean the devil that's in him. You tell me why these why these Jezebel women. Huh? And why these devil possessed men, when I talk about this stuff, they can't help it. They have to come on. They have to oppose me. They have to. Why? Why? Now, do I believe, now to answer the question, do I believe this scripture is true? 100%. I also know who it was given to. It was given to the apostles as they were laying down the foundation of a church in Jerusalem. Right? They were signs to the Jews. 
Signs were always to the Jews, never to the Gentiles. When Peter went to preach the gospel to Cornelius and the tongues happened and everything happened there and the Holy Spirit fell upon them and all the things that happened to them, it was so the Jews that were with Peter knew that God was going to save Gentiles too. Do you notice how he tried to twist it and say that, oh, Pastor Cooley doesn't believe, he doesn't believe in, uh, he doesn't believe in, uh, in, in, in the apostolic gifts. He doesn't, or he doesn't believe the Bible. No, I, I believe that scripture completely. I just know who it was written to. And that there would be a time that that wouldn't happen any longer. I know that because I understand who it was written to. Well, now, I, and probably right about now, some people might be saying, you know, you ought to tone it down a little bit, Pastor. I mean, you're going to lose credibility with people. You're, the only thing you're supposed to have passion about in 2023 the only thing you should have passion about in 2023 is football games and football players that have heart attack because they, because they took vaccines. I mean, those are the things you should have passion about. You should yell at a football game. You should yell at a, at a sporting event. You should, you should yell about other things, but you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't yell at anything else. You should just go on back and just chill out and watch these devils deceive the masses. When Christianity, when Antichrist religion is completely ushered in, it will be ushered in on the back of the charismatic movement because that's what men want. And all of the end time signs and wonders that you see, all of them, All of those in the end times are marked with deception. These signs and wonders that these people are looking for, they're marked with deception. Do you understand that? That's what they're marked by. But don't take my word for it. Study. Okay. So we went through Bethel, and we went through Holy uh, Leggings. Unholy Leggings. Let me get this off. See that. And then I got to get to this video here. Here it is. Right You're going to listen to this. Okay. This is Catherine Kerr. All right. You don't need to see it because all she's doing is just, well, I could put it on after I, hopefully it'll be fine. Are there schools in heaven? And I'm going to add to that uh, the details. Are there classes? Are there courses? Are there trade schools? Any of those type of things? Any or all of them? Now, how come, how come stupid charismatic people? How come stupid charismatic people? Stupefied, devilish, charismatic people. Why do they always, always, always ask some foolish broad with pink hair? Why do they ask that woman what heaven's like? Because she had secret visions. Why don't they... Look in the Bible. Well, those are none of those in heaven. 
I, I don't know about the trade schools. I think that anything you don't know how to do or you would like to do, horseback riding, skydiving. I mean, I can, I'm just listing a bunch of things. If you really yeah. were interested in doing that, you go to the one who knows how to do that. And yes, they will teach. They teach people. They, they give classes and teach people. But there is work. This is so stupid. All these are in heaven. And... You know, there's skydiving classes in, uh, classes in heaven. Could somebody tell me why you would need skydiving in heaven? Why would anybody need skydiving in heaven? You don't have a body that can die anymore. You're a spirit when you first go to heaven. And your, your body is down in the grave until the resurrection morning. Why would anybody need to horseback ride, learn how to horseback ride or skydive? Bird University, which is the main one that everyone goes to when you come to heaven. Everyone. You revelation on every single scripture in the word. And the ones who wrote those books in the Bible teach those books with revelation to you when you come to heaven there are classes there is a specified place called word university Whoa. and i think pastors are the most excited people when they go to that go to those classes and they learn the full revelation of what the word what those words meant when they were given okay here's the thing that i have a question for why does every charismatic go whoa 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 You know, like, why do they do that? Hang on a second. Why, why does everybody do that? And but being able to see or meet those who wrote those scriptures, who after they got to heaven were given revelation on that, because that was going to be what their assignment was. And also there's Royal University that teaches you how to rule and reign. Really? Not just, not just, not necessarily in heaven, but in the world to come on the new earth, there will be people who have position. Yeah. So there's a ruling, there's a ruling course in heaven to teach you how to rule properly. Um, I don't know, you know, uh, how insane this, this lady actually is to not read the Bible to figure out what God says about those that go to heaven, but it is absolutely insanity. Positions to be over certain areas uh, in that at that time, and you learn how to do that at Royal University. So those two places, I know I've seen them. Royal University and Royal University actually do exist in heaven, and yes, you will attend classes, not in a schoolroom behind a hard desk. I'm not going to tell you how they do that, but it's in different places throughout heaven, uh, even in the celestial realm, that these classes take place. And it, you are so amazed and wow. undone by what the Father has to share with you when you get there. Wow. So this lady is, is, is giving you revelations of heaven, and she's telling you just exactly what heaven's going to be like. Just exactly what it's going to be like. She's going to explain it all to you. Did anyone ever think about looking in the Bible for what heaven is like? Did anybody think about looking there? Like, what do the scriptures say about heaven? What do they say? Do you think they know? No, I don't think they know. I don't think they know anything about heaven. So they go to an oracle of a woman that they view as an oracle, the utterances of God, and they go to that woman 
because she has a vision. And this is why Pentecostals are heretics. This is because Pentecostals believe in these visions and Pentecostals Pentecostals believe in these visions and they believe in these in these um these special powers. Because what they do has nothing to do with what the gospel says. Brian Falk says, I'm sure she's seen things, though. Yeah, I'm sure she has, too. When you're possessed by devils, you see a lot of things. It's kind of like when people hit acid, they see a lot of things. That's, that's pretty true, actually. Remember Jesse? Jesse! 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 Remember him? He went to heaven. He told you his whole story. He got there in a chariot, went up there, walked around heaven. Abraham! Abraham! Big barrel-chested man! Abraham! Big barrel-chested man! Saw Abraham, big barrel-chested man. All of them talk like Jesse Duplantis in heaven, too. It's amazing. Again, it's charismatic apostasy. And it's so prevalent today. It's so popular. Why? Because everybody wants heaven to be like Disneyland. Everybody wants heaven to be just like Disneyland. They want heaven to be just like Just like their dreams. The one thing they don't want is heaven to be holy. They don't want God to be there. That's, that's just it. So what do they want to do? They want to preach and teach a false gospel. And that's exactly what they do. They preach and teach something that is, that is heresy, that is deceiving the masses, to look for signs and wonders. What did Jesus tell you to do? He told you to repent and believe the gospel. He didn't tell you to search for signs and wonders. All right, next. LGBTQ and abortion activist that Beth Moore prays for religious award breaks out in a swearing tirade on Twitter. Now, you know that I've chronicled Beth Moore for, I don't know, maybe three or four, four years now. I don't remember how long it's been. But I've talked about Beth Moore for a long time. She's a Jezebel. Beth Moore is a witch. Okay. I'm going to show you that again. Revelation 2.20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent. Now, of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto everyone according to, his, to your works. Now listen to me about Beth Moore. Listen to me about all female preachers. If you are a female preacher and you go to the mixed assembly of the saints and you go to a church and you preach 
before a mixed multitude of men and women in the assembly, if you lead in that church, if you preach in that church, you are a false, Jezebel, lying, snaky, deceiving woman. You are not a biblical woman. You're a Jezebel. I don't care what you mask the, the, in false humility with. I don't care what you do with it, how you do it, or how you mask it. You are a Jezebel. Because you do not even obey the scriptures. And when you don't like what the Bible says, you skip over it or you use another false perversion of the scriptures to, in order to allow yourself to be able to do the things that you do. All female preachers or pastors, falsely so-called, are absolute skanky spiritual Jezebel witches. They're filthy and they're full of abominations. And God hates it. He hates it. First Titus chapter two, or First Timothy chapter two, excuse me, First Titus, First Timothy. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Not with st- and the and the but the, excuse me, let me back up verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. There you go. But he said, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. He says it again. In 1 Corinthians. By the way. Verse number 34, 1 Corinthians 14. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. They are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. God never changed anything at Calvary with that. Nothing changed about a woman's submission and a woman's place of submission and surrender to her husband. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. They are commanded to be under obedience. As also saith the law. If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women, for women to speak in the church. Now, if they had a question, they could write it down. It could be given to the pastor and he could look at it. Or their husband could give it to the pastor if they didn't have the answer they needed. 
Something like that. The husband could ask the question. This is when the assembly is meeting for the purpose of the, of the preaching of God's word and teaching of God's word. It's not like a, a different meeting that they might have. They might have a, sometimes churches, as a church, they meet for business and women uh, are, I mean, a, a trial. And women are allowed to speak as a witness in a trial against them or something. If somebody's impugned their character, if there's a question of their character, they're allowed to speak. If they give their testimony of salvation, they're allowed to give their testimony of salvation. Those are, those are allowable things. Sometimes we do things with, we have, we have a, a children's class where there's boys and girls. Now, older ones that are women that are, they don't, they're not a part of that. But the boys and girls... Uh, that are together, you know, if we have a, you know, the church isn't assembled for that purpose of preaching and teaching. That's what Paul is discussing here. He's not saying a woman has to walk around in the, in the, when the assembly is meeting or when the assembly is together in a building somewhere, they can't talk to each other. No, he's not saying that. He's speaking authoritatively. He's talking about a woman speaking authoritatively or interrupting something or causing a distraction to something or questioning something. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Look what verse number 36 said. It says, what came, what came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Paul said, what I've said unto you are the commandments of the Lord. They are the commandments of God. That's what he said. Well, then when you have, when you have women that, that completely disobey that command, they're not modest. They're standing up and they're wanting to lead men. And they do lead men. The Pentecostal movement was built on women leading men. John Wesley's greatest heresy in his, one of his greatest heresies in his movement was to let women preach. Absolute, de, absolutely deplorable. Absolutely wicked and, and, and unmanly. But that's because he had, a, he had a mean mom. So she got saved later in life. But if you call yourself a Pentecostal and you follow the doctrines of the Pentecostal movement, which started with a bunch of rogue women doing what they want. Better get out of that movement, friend. Because you ain't right with God being in that. I'll tell you that right now. The Bible says that women are supposed to, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity and patience. The aged women likewise, they be in behaviors, becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the younger young women to be sober to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Well, that's what God said women are supposed to do. That's God's design for women. So then you come to Beth Moore. Beth Moore is a leading progressive activist in evangelicalism. Who used her platform to promote some of the most godless ideologies within the church, which contradict the teachings of the Bible. Recently, Moore drew attention to herself again when she praised pro-abortion, pro-LGBTQ activists, and Anthea Butler.
How wonderful and well-earned. Congratulations. Anthea Butler is a professor and chair of the University of Pennsylvania. Department of Religious Studies. She is known for her far-left activism in support of abortion and LGBTQ rights. She has made ludicrous assertions, even blaming white evangelical racism for the end of Roe v. Wade and claiming that white evangelicalism is trying to destroy the lives of trans kids and LGBTQ persons. She also has urged people to leave non-gay affirming churches and said churches that adhere to a bi- Biblical sexual ethic are not following Jesus. So I want you to think about this, okay? So here what you have is a wicked, vile woman defending another wicked, vile woman. There's no office of a deaconess. There's no office of a deaconess in the Bible. Yes, there were women that were servants. There's no ordained office for women in the New Testament that's ordained by the laying on of hands and by running somebody through. There's nothing like that. It's just a way to give people, women, authority. That's all it is. It's just a way to to put down men... It's a way to destroy the patriarchy. It's a way to destroy church leadership with men in it. That's all it is. They hate men. And those little whiny baby Fruit Loop Presbyterians over there that did that are just as bad as the whiny fake little... Southern Baptists that do things that that are messing around with things like that too. Catching predators. I already talked about Catherine Crick. I already have a video on her. And I've already discussed her her situation. You can listen to that. You can look it up. In fact, I'll find it for you here. Hang on. Here it is. False Apostle Catherine Crick. Charismatic Trick of Satan. Yep. Was that a year ago? Oh man, that was almost a year ago. Wow. I can't stand that woman. Okay, now let's go back. So, don't worry about that one now. We've already went through this one. Oh, you ready? More Bethel witches. Here we go. 
one of the most like ridiculous, like spooky church <laughs> story I have from the hospital is that I was taking care of a man who was unconscious and he was dying and I had no way of communicating with him. I didn't know if he was saved. I didn't know anything really. And I was in the room and his heart rate just started to drop really fast. And I was just like, Jesus, I don't even know if he knows you. Like, what, what do I do in this situation? And I just heard him say, if you forgive his sins, he'll be forgiven. Whoa, if you forgive his sins, he'll be forgiven. Nope, that's not her. It's a different one. <laughs> and I'm like, am I allowed to do this? I don't really know about this. But so I just started to intercede for him and just release God's presence over him. Just tell him, like, your sins have been forgiven. The Father is going to just meet you today. You can enter into God's kingdom tonight. And within a few minutes, he passed away. And I'm like, you know what? This is amazing. I can't believe I have the... the I don't know. It's just... God has put you in places where he gives you so much responsibility and so much authority to carry out what he wants to do. It's like you never know who you're going to meet in the last second of their life to bring people into God's kingdom. It's Right, so she said she brought that person into God's kingdom. She said she did that through that a voice came to her and told her, lay your hands on him and just forgive his sins. Well, that's not the gospel, is it? That's not the gospel. The Bible says men have to repent and believe the gospel. No one can do that for them. No one can, no one can get saved for you. If you're under the sound of my voice and you're lost and dead in your sins, you will die and go to a devil's hell unless you repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. You will die in your sins. Somebody said, why do they all talk the same? Because they have the same Antichrist spirit. That's why. They literally have the spirit of Antichrist. That's why they're like that. It's just who they are. That's the spirit that they have. That's California. It's not like a valley girl. Are you like the Duggars? Do you like the Duggars? I was like, I don't know why. Do you? And she goes, no, I think they're backwards and stupid. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. So she just told them what? That I could forgive his sins. Is that in the Bible? Not to take an unconscious man and forgive his sins for him and repent for him and get saved for him? You know what she did do, though? She helped deceive that man into hell. That's what she did do. That guy gave up and went to hell. He died and went to hell. That's what he did. She just had him give up. So there's a false, devilish, satanic prophet in his room. Walks up to him and gives him false hope. And that man is now in hell. That is a witch. And they have the same weird, creepy, seductive spirit. They have the same spirit. It's 
Uh, we'll try it again here. Remember this woman? This is Bethel. Uh, okay. And that, this will kind of probably offend you, but oh well. And the Holy Spirit to me is like the genie from Aladdin. I view the Holy Spirit like the genie from Aladdin. And he's blue. Unplanned, perfect. And he's funny, and he's sneaky, and he's courageous, and he's everywhere, and he's wonderful. That's who he is to me, and he's funny, and he's sneaky. <laughs> he's silly, he's wonderful. And I view him like the genie from Aladdin. I don't know where in my life that just kind of like came up. Maybe when I was like 10, I don't know, but because he's there, you know, <laughs> and he's, he's the helper and he's just always supportive and comforting and he's just fun and he's blue. Ah, okay. Hold on. Good point. Good color. Oh my word. This is this is their version of God. Yeah, that's that's their version of God. God the Holy Spirit is not silly. God the Holy Spirit is not silly. God is holy. God is absolutely just and holy. But these charismatic apostates, this is what they teach. This is Bethel. That's the spirit of Bethel, remember? Now watch, same thing. One of the most like ridiculous, like spooky church <laughs> story I have from the hospital is that I was taking care of a man who was unconscious and he was dying, and I had no way of communicating with him. I didn't know if he was saved. I didn't know anything, really. And I was in the room, and his heart rate just started to drop really fast. And I was just like, Jesus, I don't even know if he knows you. Like, what, what do I do in this situation? And I just heard him say, if you forgive his sins, he'll be forgiven. <laughs> And I'm like, am I allowed to do this? I don't really know about this. But so I just started to intercede for him and just release God's presence over him. Just tell him, like, your sins have been forgiven. The Father is going to just meet you today. You can enter into God's kingdom tonight. And within a few minutes, he passed. All of that was based off of what she heard a voice say to her. Remember what I said earlier when the little devil charismatic came on here? And the little devil tried to challenge me and say that I didn't love God's word or, or that, that, that he, that he drank poison and cast out devils and all this other stuff. What did I say to him? I stake my never dying soul on this book. I stake everything I believe. This is, this is a part of my life. This is my life. This book. This King James Bible. See, that's the difference in me and them. The difference is, if I need to tell you something, it's got to be from the scriptures if I need to teach you something. It's got to be rooted in scriptural principle. It's got to be, thus saith the Lord, if it has to do with your never dying soul. It can't be my vision that I got gas, that somebody slipped me a hit of acid, that somebody makes me feel this way.
It has to be the words of God. That's what it has to be. What do they do? The very opposite. The words of men, they prophesy what is in their own corrupt hearts. And the devils that speak to them. The devils that speak to them. That's what they do. It's the devils that speak to them and give them things to say. Oh, God's telling me to say this to you. They always say things like, well, Jesus appeared to me and told me this. And, the, and, that, and this is what I'm going to tell you. Really? Because when I counsel people, I don't, I, don't, I don't tell them what mysterious voice came to me and spoke to me. I take the words of the living God. Yes, she said the Holy Ghost is blue. That's what happens when you leave the authority of Scripture and you do what you want to do. When you leave the authority of the Scriptures, you'll end up believing anything. Why? Because you don't have a final authority. See, my final authority is not the voices that I hear in my head. Or spirits that speak to me. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist, wherever you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. They have some Jesus appear to them. What happens when some Jesus appears to them? Well, it's not Jesus. It, it's testifying against Jesus that came in the flesh. It testifies against them. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. So if this spirit comes to you and tells you it's Jesus, it's not of God. It's not of God. It is Antichrist. Why? Because it's saying it's Jesus. It's not Jesus. Jesus is in heaven. On the throne of God. At the right hand of the Father. Right? That's who Jesus is. When they have a Jesus appear to them and they say, I was sitting there and like, I was sitting there and like, Jesus came to me and started twirling my hair when I was in bed. That's not Jesus, you witch. Or like the one charismatic guy said, Jesus came to me and he said to me, please forgive me. They're antichrist. That's why the Pope is antichrist. 
the very every pope has always been antichrist. Why? Because they say they are God on earth, in the flesh. They are God. That they are the vicars of Christ. They are God on earth. Well, they are antichrist. When these spirits that come claim to be Jesus, they're acknowledging that they're antichrist. Why does Jesus need to come to me when I have the completed scriptures right here and he, he does through the word of God? This is how God speaks to us today, through his words. Through the Holy Ghost bearing witness through the words of God, through the scriptures. That's how. That's how God speaks to us today. In these last days, spoken unto us by his son. We're running out of time. We're going to have to pick it up again Wednesday for more, more of this possibly charismatic uh, chaos and all the other nutty things that go on in the woke mob. Give you a chance to say hi. If you've never said hi before, there's... There's been about almost 60 people on here today. If you haven't said hi uh, at all, or if this is the first time listening and you're mad at me, that's okay too. I'm okay with that. But uh, let's play a song here and give everybody a chance to say hi. Maybe you have a question or something. Let's see which one. Let's see. How about we go over here? We'll give you a, a second here. And we'll look around here. Just give me a second. Some of you may not be in that big of a hurry anyway. But. I'll find the one I'm looking for. Oh, I'm so happy in the Lord, ere since he saved my soul. I'll shout it from the mountain tops, Christ Jesus made me whole. Oh, la dee, ho 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 Jesus love through all this world be gone. Rejoicing, singing praises always daily takes us home. So each day here we'll walk with you in liberty and hope. 
Good to have everybody on here. Hope you're doing well. And uh, we got real fiery there for a while, but that's good. I, I don't mind it. I, I don't mind. Call, I, I've seen those devils cause so much trouble in churches, those devil possessed charismatics. I just, I don't, I, I just, I just lay them out. I don't even mess with them because I know what damage they do to people. I know what their doctor does. It's damnable is what it is. And uh, it infects Pentecostal charismatics, they affect, infect churches and destroy them. All right. Anyway, so you pray for us. Pray the Lord continue to bless us. And that God would continue to um, meet our needs and take care of us. Yes, I have had him in this church. Um, pray, uh, I'll get some more sermons online uh, over on YouTube. I'll try to get one on tonight because I'm behind there on YouTube. And also, I got to switch and put a new one on for sermon audio as well and keep moving things forward. But uh, you pray for us. Pray for our ministry. Uh, pray the Lord continue to bless us uh, and keep us and... We're getting past this sickness that our families had with uh, different sore throats and strep throats and all that kind of stuff. But so praise the Lord, that's that's getting better. Um, but uh, you you pray for our ministry and and uh, pray for the work that we do for the Lord. And uh, let's see uh, if you'd like to give to our ministry, uh, you can do that uh, down here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, there's a place you can mail it to. You can mail it to 1030 South Highway 3, Northfield, Minnesota, 55057. Feel free to mail that there if you'd like to mail something to us. Uh, if you'd like to give through PayPal, that is salvationpreacher at gmail.com. Also, if you go up here uh, on our page, there's a give button there. You can click on there. There's PayPal there. So, and you can find out everything you need there. As far as that goes, Venmo, Apple Pay, all kinds of other stuff. Uh, I Even Cash App, which I used for the first time a, a few weeks ago. So um, if you uh, want to do that, if the Lord lays on your heart to do that, great. And uh, if, you, uh, if you can't, if you're not able to, then pray that the Lord would lead somebody else to, because God's able to use others as well, and he uses your prayers. So... We need to pray to the Lord and, and seek his face and ask God's blessing. Amen. All right, everybody. God bless you. I will see you, Lord willing, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Central. And uh, we'll be back again live, 2 p.m. Central. Have a good night, everybody.